Hey children, so today in this class we are going to learn about the topic nervous system from animal nervous system. So before we directly get into the topic, let us have a quick look at what are the points that we are going to cover in our today's class. So before that, do you all remember what we have learnt in yesterday's class? Yes, it is there here. So we have covered about synapse, receptors and also the reflex actions. Now in today's class, we are going to learn about the nervous system which is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And this peripheral nervous system transmits signals between the brain and the body. For example, brain tells the legs to walk. So that's how the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system works together. Now let us get into the topic by entering into learning pad 3D world. As you can see here, this is the central nervous system. Central nervous system means the brain and the spinal cord together constitute the central nervous system. So we can see here the brain and this is the spinal cord, right? So the brain and the spinal cord together constitute the central nervous system. They receive information from all the parts of the body and integrate it. And the peripheral nervous system consists of the cranial nerves from the brain and also the spinal nerves from the spinal cord. So the communication between the central nervous system and the parts of the body is facilitated by the peripheral nervous system what you are seeing here. And we all know that human brain is located in the head region, right? As we all know, brain is situated inside a bony box like structure known as cranium or the skull. So while I'm rotating, you see that there is something protruding down from the skull, right? What is it? And how is it protruding down? Is there any opening for the skull? Yes, let me show you. So here, this is the spinal cord which will protrude down and extend till the back. Now, let me show you how is it protruding down. Present below the skull is the foramen of magnum. So, the opening is also called as foramen and the opening through which the spinal cord passes down is the foramen of magnum. And the spinal cord starts from here and extends till the back. I am tilting it upwards and here you can see the foramen of magnum on the occipital bone and this is the spinal cord which will extend till the back, below the back. If you cut open a human skull, human brain is located in this way. If we are removing the upper part of the skull, human brain looks like this inside, located inside the skull. So you see that there is some fluid on the brain, right? Let us see what is that. This, if you see the longitudinal section of the brain, here there is a fluid present in between the brain and the skull. This fluid is the cerebrospinal fluid which acts as a cushion and protects the brain from mechanical shocks and this cerebrospinal fluid extends along the spinal cord as well. Yeah, let's learn about the meninges of the brain which acts as a protective connective tissue around the brain and the spinal cord. So now we see the microscopic view of the three meninges of the brain which are the dura matter, arachnoid matter and the pia matter. These three connective tissues protect the brain from mechanical shocks which arise from outside. Now let's move on to the parts of the brain which are cerebrum. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. This is the cerebrum. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and this is the cerebellum which is the second largest part of the brain. And this is the pituitary gland which is located at the base of the brain. 
and here is the pons medulla and the hypothalamus and this is the spinal cord which extends down till the back now let us see the three main divisions of the brain which are the forebrain midbrain and the hindbrain So this is the forebrain which is highlighted in green colored part and this is the midbrain and this is the hindbrain. So as we are done with the topic, now let me check how well you all have understood this topic in yesterday's and today's class. So here you see that what is the basic unit of nervous system? So we have four options here, receptor, synapse, neuron and the dendrite. So if you recollect, in yesterday's class, we have discussed about one important thing. Yes, you are right. Neuron is the basic unit of the nervous system. Now let's see the questions related to today's discussion. Okay. This is one of the important questions that what are the two main divisions of the nervous system? The options are central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, voluntary and involuntary, sensory and motor and the sympathetic and parasympathetic. So in today's class what we have discussed? Yeah, we have discussed about what are the two, two main divisions of the nervous system, right? Yes, option A is the right answer. Central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are the two main divisions of the nervous system. How is the brain protected in the body? By muscle tissue, vertebral column or skull and cerebrospinal fluid or the peripheral nervous system? I think you all are very much aware of this question. Yeah, the correct answer is skull and the cerebrospinal fluid. Skull is a bony box like structure which protects the brain and cerebrospinal fluid acts as a cushion. And next, which type of muscles are found in internal organs? Voluntary, involuntary, skeletal or the cardiac muscles? No guesses? Okay, let's see the answer. It is involuntary muscles. 